Hey everyone, and welcome back. So today is a really exciting day in the DeFi space because Uniswap just dropped their announcement for V3. Now before we get into that, I did want to direct your attention to the description below. In there you'll find my Twitter link, and you'll also find a link to a Telegram chat. Uh, so basically trying to build out a Telegram with other DeFi enthusiasts that want to talk about yield farm opportunities, uh, new protocols, updates, etc. Uh, so if you're interested in getting involved with the community and chatting there, just click the link below and join the Telegram. Uh, so let's get right to it. So in Uniswap V3, there are two major announcements. Uh, the first is the ability to add concentrated liquidity, and the second is the ability to choose what fee you want to select for your liquidity pool. Now all of this is set to be released on Ethereum mainnet on May 5th, and then L2 deployment on Optimism is set to follow shortly after. So the doc that Uniswap provided is pretty long and comprehensive, and I'm going to walk you through all of the details and explanations that you need to know. So the first major change is concentrated liquidity. Now in Uniswap version 2, liquidity providers distributed liquidity across all possible price curves. So that means assets were reserved for all prices between zero and infinity. So for most pools, the majority of this liquidity is actually not in use and will never be used. Uniswap v3 hopes to solve this by allowing liquidity providers to specify exactly at which points on that price curve they're providing liquidity for. So the first major benefit of this is that it protects against impermanent loss. So because liquidity providers are concentrating their liquidity around a certain price range, if the price range moves outside of their stated range, that LP position is essentially turned off. What happens is the LP's pooled assets are sold off into the lower valued token. So here they show a great graphic of how you can actually visualize what this concentrated liquidity looks like. Now for the end user, this isn't going to actually have much of an effect. Uh, so the end user will still have access to all of that combined liquidity across all of the individual curves that the liquidity providers have set. So Uniswap believes that this is going to lead to new strategies and they help visualize that in the animation here. So first they show what version 2 looks like, where you have a liquidity distribution that is flat uh, with the price in the center. And then here you have a standard normal distribution of liquidity around price, which we could probably expect for most pairs. So from there we could see other strategies develop where liquidity is uh, below the price or above the price, uh, perhaps predicting future moves in the market. Now I'll play this animation here they provided, but it really helps visualize how much uh, more efficient this new system is. So you're able to supply a lot less liquidity and earn a higher share of fees. So you can see here as the range of liquidity around the price gets smaller, uh, the fee multiple increases. Now Uniswap provided another graph to show how this helps liquidity providers manage risk. So this example gives the same starting balances, Alice's $1 million deposit and Bob's $183,500 deposit. Now in this unfortunate example, the price of ETH actually drops to $0. So here you can see that Alice lost her, the entire value of her liquidity position, whereas Bob, because he only had to invest $183,500 into providing liquidity, he still has that remaining capital of $816,500 left, assuming that they started at the same balance. So next, Uniswap introduces you to a new feature that they're calling range orders. Now a range order is similar to a traditional limit order. So liquidity providers would actually deposit just one single token in a custom price range that's set above or below the current market price. So if that market price actually enters into that liquidity provider specified price range, the protocol will actually automatically start selling off that single token into that other token of the pair. And if that pair's price range goes completely to the other extreme, uh, that first original token will be completely exchanged for the second token in that pair. It sounds a bit confusing, but if you look at the graph here, uh, it's actually pretty simple to understand. So you start with DAI, and then over the course of these price fluctuations, you end up with 50% DAI, 50% USDC, and then finally you end up with 100% USDC, should the price fluctuations justify that. So you can imagine that when you're not talking about stablecoins, these range orders can offer you a new strategy to uh, purchase another token, uh, take profit, buy the dip, uh, or other strategies. They also list out one really interesting use case, and that is uh, primary issuance events. So with primary issuance events, a token issuer can now deposit liquidity in that single token that they're launching, and then they can specify the exact range of prices across which they wish to sell that token for. So of course there are externalities with all of this, uh, and the, the big one here is that these new LP tokens will not be ERC-20s and are now going to be NFTs or non-fungible tokens. 
So I think it's also important to note that trading fees are no longer going to be automatically reinvested back into the pool on the LP's behalf. So that'll be something that has to be manually done now. So they do go on to note that they expect that other developers will help build sophisticated strategies that could be tokenized into ERC-20s. And this would all allow for a more passive user experience. So they predict that this could include multi-positions, auto rebalancing to concentrate around the market price, fee reinvestment, lending, and more. And so I think this is really interesting and it's worth noting um, that I think Uniswap's really trying to be infrastructure for DeFi and really just build at the protocol level and not necessarily targeting those end users. Now the second big change here is that Uniswap V3 is going to allow liquidity providers to select from three separate fee tiers per pair. Now those tiers are 0.05%, 0.3%, and 1%. Now currently with Uniswap V2, liquidity providers receive a 0.3% share, and that here is the middle of those three buckets. Now this is going to help liquidity providers because it's going to more accurately pay them for the risk uh, that they're accepting by providing liquidity. It's also going to help the end user because they're going to be able to use pools uh, that charge a very small fee, such as a stablecoin pool. Now, the reason we could accept the stablecoin pool to migrate to a 0.05% fee structure is that the liquidity providers really aren't facing any impermanent loss risk if both assets are pegged at the same value. Now, we can imagine that with more risky pairs, uh, liquidity providers might ask for a 1% fee from each transaction. And of course, we'll see how the market prices that in and, and how everything plays out. And this is something they thought about a bit, and they do mention that uh, they were a little concerned that liquidity could be fragmented between those three buckets, but they think eventually the market will set the price uh, for each pair uh, and that the market will reach an equilibrium there. Now in Uniswap v2, the protocol actually had a switch uh, to allow the protocol itself to earn fee from a small fee from each transaction. Uh, but now in Uniswap version 3, that's going to be much more specific. So through governance, the protocol can receive a small fee from each individual pool, and that feature will have to be turned on manually on a per pool basis. Now the last update here is that Uniswap has introduced advanced time-weighted average price oracles. So this new time-weighted average price oracle will make it possible to calculate any recent average price uh, within the past week or so, and that is done with a single on-chain call. Uh, so this is much more gas efficient and it's easier for developers to integrate. And so finally here you can see a little bit more about the license that Uniswap is actually releasing this code under. So for the first two years that Uniswap version 3 is actually released, uh, this code is actually going to be limited and protected against uh, commercial use or adoption. And then after two years this code essentially becomes a public good. Now it seems to me that at first Uniswap just really wants to protect against a hard fork like what happened with SushiSwap, and so they want to concentrate all of this liquidity around the Uniswap community and ecosystem, and to do that they're protecting their code for about two years. Now it does raise the question of how they could actually stop anonymous teams or developers, uh, so it's not clear that that is possible, but it's interesting that this is something they thought of and they are trying to protect their code here. So as you can see, there's a ton of great new stuff coming in Uniswap version 3, and I think this is really going to help uh, drive DeFi further into the future. So I'm really excited about all of these changes, and I can't wait to try them out myself on May 5th when the protocol is released on mainnet. Uh, thank you all so, so much for watching this video. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more, please subscribe. And then once again, my Telegram group chat uh, link is below if you want to join, and you can follow me on Twitter as well. So thank you all so much, and I'll see you on the next one.